We are now in the payroll system and we streamed out Stanton while we were, while, as we were traveling and streamed in Pyro. Nope, sorry, wrong one. Uh, wrong one, sorry, embarrassing. There we go. Welcome to this week's episode of Leadnap Gaming. This past weekend, CIG rolled out one of their signature elements, the annual Citizen Convention. The convention kicks off an important time in the development. We get the biggest update of the year on how things are going, never mind rolling out new ships and features. Yet this year, CitizenCon was a flop. Before I can make this point though, we have to understand some important background. To the uninitiated, SitCon's a multi-day convention that brings backers and developers together in the same format as any other big fan base convention. This is something that really sets CIG apart. No other game studio has the balls to throw a fan convention to a game that isn't even released. And that plays a very big role, not just in boosting fundraising, but because SitCon is, as I already mentioned, how we get information about how the verse is going to be and most importantly, when and how we're going to see these things. The convention typically opens with a pre-game convention of various community members gathering, followed by the opening, which sets the stage with a preview of the big reveal, to push the afterburner button on the hype. From there, it's a few days of breakout sessions, different development departments going into the nitty-gritty details of what they're doing, how things work, and what's in the pipeline. These breakout sessions are huge. They provide the community with a remarkable insight and buy-in with the development. And they provide a fascinating picture of how complex and special Star Citizen really is. Then it all culminates in the keynote, usually delivered by Chris Roberts himself, delivering the big reveal of game features and ships, which manages to wrap up all the breakout sessions together into the next iteration of Star Citizen's persistent universe. Last year, the format changed because of the pandemic, after taking 2020 off entirely. It's still open normally, still featured the specialty lectures, and still had the keynote. It was a success for many, because many of us joined our orgs remotely and watched together. We still enjoyed the same sort of content. So why does this all matter this year? The Citizen Convention is a massive undertaking, something that requires over a year of planning to pull off, and... Given the uncertainty about border closures, changing requirements for air travel, even the number of people allowed in a room, CIG not returning to the normal format? Entirely understandable. Yet, in 2021, expectations were lower. We hadn't had a convention the year prior at all. Most of the world still remote. And the uncertainties I just mentioned continued to leave planning a giant jumble. This year, it's no excuse. Even the lead-up to sitcom was tamed down, leaving a low tide of hype. The opening felt flat, and the big highlight was, frankly, they built a set that had some resemblance to the Connie Phoenix, an experience none of us could feel watching from home. The ship session, always the most hyped and watched segment of any sitcom by backers of all stripes, lasted maybe 20 minutes. It might as well have been an episode of ISC. In years past, we've been treated to tours of yet unseen ships, details from various parts of the teams building the ships giving us behind the scenes details about their construction, the ideas painstakingly put into them. This year we got JPEGs of a new concept ship that we'll talk about in a few minutes, a ISC level tour of the Corsair, and details on a new ATV. Yet it rolled downhill from there. Half the people I watched with were sure the ship segment wasn't over yet, and more would certainly be coming, but it was clear to me we'd rolled onwards into new topics and segments. Which were rough. I want to give CIG the benefit of the doubt here. On paper, this was set to deliver. These are those breakout sessions, and they just don't have the same weight in a streamed format. The sessions in a physical convention are great. You go to the ones you're interested in seeing, you skip the ones you don't care about, and you watch them on YouTube if they conflicted with one you did attend. For those not at one of them, you join the rest of the crowd, celebrating the game we all love. In this format, though, the whole community is along for the ride. Not interested in Tony's Ultra Deep Quanta panel? Too bad. Not that we got his high-quality panel this year anyways. 
it leads to a spammed chat that moves too quickly to read and matters not anyways because there's no interaction with it. The entire allure to streaming on Twitch. The panel offers community engagement, but this year, CAG could have pre-recorded the entire thing and just aired it as live, and we couldn't have known the difference. With this format, once you go into a topic no one cares about, people tune out, killing the atmosphere. By noon, the Discord watch party I was a part of was empty. We have to move on before this turns into an all-day affair, but like I said, I know why CIG kept it digital this year, but I plead with them to bring it back in person next year, because this just doesn't work. The flop wasn't just the format, though. Rather, that the whole thing was lazy. This isn't to cast shade on all the hard work that goes into putting a production on at this or any scale. It just didn't have the polished delivery and engagement other years have. The segments were just separated by titles, and only a handful of staff were actually live, with most of the segments being pre-recorded. The live parts just came off as rambling conversations between themselves. This wasn't presentation. It was just televised internal conversation. It felt underprepared as well, with confusion amassing over the HUD, for example, when we were shown the old, new HUD, in a discussion about the new, new HUD that will follow the HUD we've never seen or used. Never mind CIG's incorrect assessment that real fighter pilots don't rely on AR through their helmets. All the data's in the HUD and AR displays in modern fighters. Even passenger aircraft are putting HUDs in with all the data for the pilot. Which brings me full cycle to the opening point. CIG likewise gave us nothing new. Hold your pitchforks. Yes, master modes are new. The changes in quantum travel are new. New HUD, new ships, new pyro planets. Except none of this moves Star Citizen forward. We've had a HUD since you could lift off from Port Alisar, and they've changed it multiple times. Ship modes, capacitor gameplay, power management, and multi-crew concept have always been in the game, and have repeatedly been changed. CIG hyped us up for going to Pyro four years ago. If anything, CIG should have saved Salvage for Sitcon. That is the sort of thing we get introduced to every year. Big steps forward in the development of the game, new game loops, mega changes that will transform the game from where it's been. Master modes will certainly change the way the game's played, and the new EVA model is incredible. This isn't to take away from the amazing work CAG has put in this year and that they're showing off. But the game doesn't feel any closer to completion than it did in 2019, when all we see is the third or fourth redo of features that are already in game. 2021 was a gimme here. No one expected there not to be setbacks, with the shifting to remote, changes to various aspects of workflow, and so forth. This year, however, it isn't excusable. We tuned in to see how much closer we're getting to the big release, and instead, we were treated to the same old, we're going to change what we already built, again. Which does lead me to the bright spot from this year's sitcom, and it's deeper than it might seem on the surface. No pun. CIG unveiled the new Crusader Spirit, a small two-man ship in various modes, cargo, bombing, passenger transport. We're going to dive into these in a later episode because there is so much there to talk about, but the two big elephants in the room with this release are what matters. First off, CIG released us a concept ship that is almost starter priced. The C1 cargo version is a dead-on cutty black made by Crusader. I love this. We need more of this ship but by blank, where the features don't really trade. If Drake isn't your style, here it is in the Crusader skin. Marvelous. Again, the big deal then is the price point. There isn't a high-low concept release this year. $100 gets you a C1, the same $100 that gets you a cutty black a reasonable concept offering that lets a lot of players in on the excitement. Yet this isn't the only major win here. This isn't the mid-sized Banu what thingy magic that features four technologies not found in the verse yet and an extra game loop to boot. The Spirit are small ships. They, for the most part, use Crusader assets already created. You get the feeling that these ships could very well enter the verse next year. They're an easy win for CIG. They give us new options. Win-win. I will say this now, though. I suspect we won't see the spirits until Tier 1 passenger plays ready to be rolled out. The C1 is a cutty black. The A2 can continue to stand in for bombings. The E1's real value will be fleshing out and implementing that first passenger loop iteration. 
The upside, though, is such gameplay could quickly follow Salvage, which would be a welcome and exciting addition to the verse we have today. To recap, then, CitizenCon this year was a step back. We tune in to see the future, but all we got was the past and present reheated. I had reservations about tuning in before it even started because I didn't want to be told to get excited to be introduced to Pyro for a fourth year. CIG has put a ton of work into Star Citizen this past year. Outside of Sitcon, it feels like production is full steam ahead. But now we see so much of that hard work isn't moving the ball towards the goal line. I feel confident from Sitcon that 2023 is going to see some really cool stuff rolling out. We are going to play this game like we never have. But this year's convention did CIG no favors. This is the sweet spot of the year, though, in Star Citizen. Sitcon starts the season that will culminate with the other big Star Citizen event, the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo. Hopefully, CIG is saving some of that energy and effort for that unveiling, which brings me to your chance to get excited, because we're only a few hundred subs away from a Misk Odyssey going into one of my subscribers' hangers during an IAE livestream. If you haven't subscribed, mash that button and leave a comment for a chance to have your name drawn out. Make sure to like and share this video with your friends, and let me know in the comments what part of Sitcon you enjoyed the most, and I will catch you all next time.